Hey, hello again, and welcome to the second episode of the Imperial Star Destroyer model build from Bandai. So last time I attached the side pieces to the bottom. I did some panel painting um, on the top and bottom of the hull. Um, I also did some light blocking on the interior to prepare it for lighting. Did a light test showing how the side lights up and this test was without even diffusion and full light blocking. Uh, also wired up and lit the engines and got them going which are looking really nice. And then I also got the whole upper portion of the ship built. And now what we're going to do is move on to some weathering of this whole piece here. And I'm going to have to do all that before I can light the windows because I don't want any weathering soaking in through the windows and the diffusion. So I'm going to go ahead and start out here with my Tamiya German Grey Wash. Um, I've put a gloss coat over all these pieces. I'm just going to do a wash then wipe away the excess and just try to fill in these panel lines and you can see on this side the panel lines compared to that side. And then I've also gone and I've done a wash over the sides and that really made them pop and they're really looking nice and they stand out. I mean you look at that compared to this side which has not been washed yet you can see they just don't have that detail. Here's a comparison side by side of washed versus non-washed. And then I've also washed the entire backside and top bridge portion as well and now the entire upper portion of the Star Destroyer. And a little light test there as well with the bridge and there is no light leaking anywhere that I can see so it's it's looking really good at this point. So here I've done the gray wash over the bottom hull of the ship and I've also done a wash over the entire top portion of the hull of the ship as well. And then here I have this upper portion attached to the top hull um, but I need to light that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a piece of styrene and cut it out to shape to match this cutout and then I'm just going to attach some cob LED strips to the top side of the styrene sheet. So I've traced out a template here and I'm going to cut that out. And I've cut it out and it will fit right on the inside of the upper hull like so it fits right in between those two posts there and it will sit right in there and I'll glue that in place and then I'll go ahead and attach my cob LED strips on this as well and that way it will illuminate the entire inside of the upper portion with the bridge and all that of the uh, Star Destroyer and then I'm going to put some foil on the inside of this to block it which I've done here and that will give a little more light bouncing around and illuminate the sides really well. And this piece that I cut out, I also did aluminum foil on this side so that when the cob strips are attached, it will also continue to bounce the light around inside and give us some really good lighting to illuminate those sides of the upper portion of the Star Destroyer. And you can see how that's going to do right there. So I've gone and I've secured this styrene sheet in place, done some glue around all points of it to hold it in place and secure it. And then I've gone and I've attached my Cobb LED strips. I have power and negative ground running, connecting all the strips together. And I give it a little bit of power here and you can see they all light up and there's a lot of light there. And then I've done a hole so that the wires from the top portion can fit down through the styrene. I'm going to go ahead and push this into place here. And then here's a lighting test of how it looks once it's lit up. Now I have not done any diffusion yet on the lighting for the upper portion though. So the upper portion I've gone and I've done some spots of red in some of the windows to have some red windows scattered throughout like on the actual filming miniature. And then I've gone and I've applied diffusion around all the windows so that all that light inside will get nice 
and diffused. I also added one extra strip in the middle here just to give me a little extra boost of light there in the middle. And then with that diffusion it should give us a nice balance. I've also attached a little SMD to the back for these two little lights here underneath the uh, trash. And then I put a little piece of styrene over it and then I've gone and applied some black paint and it's actually on right now but you don't see any light leaking because of the black paint over that styrene. So now I've run all the wires out including this SMD and I'm going to go ahead and secure the top portion to the upper hull of the Star Destroyer. And then I've taken all the wires and attached them to a little board here, the ground and positive wires and a resistor for that little SMD so that it doesn't fry. And I've got my little connector here. This end will connect to the lower hull so that I can pull the upper and lower hull apart. And here's another light test now with it all sealed up. And you can see it's lighting up really nicely and it's quite bright and even and it looks really nice there's no hot spots rotating it around you don't see light shining through and it doesn't look like there is a light on the inside and it's just coming through holes it actually looks like individual lit lights windows because of the diffusion and because of all the light bouncing so now it's time to move on and do some diffusion around these little raised areas here for the upper hull and I'm going to use my diffusion paper, cut little strips, and put it over all these windows here. And I'm going to go ahead and attach my first little strip that I cut out. And I'm just using little dabs of Elmer's glue in between some of the windows to hold this in place. It takes very little because this diffusion paper will just glue really easily with the Elmer's glue. And that will hold it in place. And I've gone and I've done this entire raised area here on the upper hull of the ship and I've gone and done the other two raised areas as well so the entire upper hull is done then I've done the same to the lower hull diffusion down the sides and then I have diffusion for the middle here where the hangar is where they bring the ship in the uh, Tantive 4. I've also added my LED strips down the sides to light them up and attached it with some spots of hot glue and I added two more little strips here over the hanger to help illuminate the uh, lighting inside the hanger that you see. I've also attached a little board here for the ground and hots for all the LED strips and the breakout that will attach to the upper hull and then there's a line that's going to go out down through the center of the model through the pole and this board here is for the smaller engines and this board is for the larger engines. And I've gone and I've also secured the whole engine assembly. Uh, the three main engines get powered with all the lights on the main board. The four little ones get powered off this board separately. And another light test and you can see all the LED strips light up and the engines light up. Everything is working just fine. So I've soldered a ground wire from this board to this board and then I have this white for hot so that the uh, secondary sublight engines can power by themselves and they'll run out with the other power light. And I've gone and I've drilled a hole down through the bottom of the hole here for my pipe to come through, for my tubing to come through. Here's my tubing and it will fit right inside there and the wires will run through it. So I've gone and I've painted my tubing with some primer and then black paint. And I've put the tubing in place. It's very snug and secure. And I'm also going to put a ring of glue around it to hold it in place on the interior of the hull. And I've done that now. I've glued all around. I've also run the wires from the boards down through the tube and pulled it out the bottom to go into the base. So at this point I'm going to connect the upper hull and the bottom hull together with these wires. And then with a quick plug-in all the lights are coming on including the top hull. You can see all of those lit up there. 
and everything seems to be working just fine engines are all working all lighting seems to be working fine and no issues and I've now put the upper and lower halves together in another light test and all the lights are coming on and working I heard people when this first came out talk about the front of this curling up and I have not had any issues mine is straight so I don't know what that issue was but like the way mine's turning out so you can see some light leaks here and I'm using my uh, extra thin Tamiya cement and just put it right inside this little area here where there's some light leak and squeeze it together and this cement just flows right in there really nice and easily and then it dissolves the plastic and holds it together and fills in those light leaks so they're nice and secure and tight and here's another one on this other side and you can just see when I just touch it it just flows right inside there and it dries and because it's melting in the plastic together it seals it up really well so at this point I've gone around and done all light leaks nothing left for light leaking uh, even in the back here everything looks great no light leaks coming through anywhere so this is the base that I've made uh, has a USB port on the back as well as one on the side so depending on how you have it on display you can plug it in from the back or the side uh, it's got a main power button to power on the main lights secondary power button which will power up the sublight engines uh, we have your USB board here the side USB board here uh, the hot and ground from the secondary board are connected to the hot and ground of the main board so whichever one is plugged in it'll feed the power buttons we have a hot going over to this button and then I just need to connect the hot from the model to this and that'll power up that the ground for the entire model will connect to the ground here on this USB board which will then connect to that USB board so whichever one you choose and the last power button the hot will connect to this white hot which powers the sublight engines and now I've run the wires into the base through the tube into the base here and I'm going to go ahead and push them through and secure the tubing to the base and I've got the wires run down there and I'm just gonna push this into place and then I'll secure it in place on the underside with some hot glue and here we have it mounted secured you can see the wires coming out on the bottom here and I'm gonna go ahead and solder the leads here we have the ground going to this board here and then I've got the ground to this board which is also connected to the secondary board so you can use either one I have the white going to this for the sublight engines and the red hot going to this button for all the main lighting all right we've got a USB cable plugged in and lights come on with the uh, power button all the lights on the ship work fine the engines are coming on second button the secondary sublight engines come on you can turn those off so a little final detailing here we have this little claw here which goes in the hanger and you just mount this in place and I've got it secured here this is where the Tantive 4 is docked into when it's taken by the uh, star destroyer then we have these little fins here that go on the engine bells these little side pieces that attach and these are very small little pieces here so I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting these out so that I can start putting these together and you can see how big these are especially these little side pieces here that go on the sides of those flaps they're very small that's gonna be fun to work with and I've assembled my first one here with the side pieces on and you can see how that looks when that's completed and then I've gone and I've done all nine of them uh, three for each of the three engine bills and then I've gone and I have 
primed them with my Tamiya gray primer and then shot them with my Tamiya AS20 Insignia white for the base coat. And then the fin just kind of goes on the top of the engine bell right here. And then once that's secured you go ahead and attach the other two to the bottom portion of the engine bell and continue on for all three of the engine bells. And then here's how they look with the uh, lights on. And they're looking pretty cool. It's a nice detail to add to this kit and more screen accurate. There's also a little detail you can add of this little Millennium Falcon that comes with the kit. I painted this one up and it would go right here on the back if you choose the Empire Strikes Back version. I will not be using that. I am doing the Episode 4 version. So there's this little Tantive 4 that came with the kit. And I've gone and I've painted this guy up, which was a lot of fun. A little teeny thing to paint. But I've got this primarily painted up, ready to go, and I will be displaying this chasing after the Tantive 4 from A New Hope. So to achieve this, what I'm going to do is I have a little piece of 0.25 millimeter fiber optic here. And I'm going to stick it into the uh, Tante 4 and then hang it from the bottom of the Star Destroyer to give the illusion of it flying and being chased. So I'm going to drill a little hole here with my 0.3 millimeter drill bit. And then I've gone and secured the 0.25 millimeter fiber optic in there and glued it in place to hold the Tante 4. And then I've drilled a little hole in the bottom of the Star Destroyer and glued the fiber optic in place. So enjoy the completed build.
Hey, if you like watching my videos, please feel free to give them a like. And so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos, click subscribe.